Yo, misal medimo. Tiano Almami was a famous teacher among the Futa. He was a marabou and instructor to many men from Senegal and Mali who traveled from far in search of his religious teachings. When his marabou decided to pass on his knowledge to Tiono, the other people in the village feared for him. They felt that since he was only a child, he could not handle the responsibility that comes with such knowledge. But this apprenticeship was very important for him, for all of us, the village and even the futa. Diono Almami came from a very influential Marabou family called the Almamis. They were instrumental in the establishment of Islam in the futa. Abdul Kader Khan was the first Almami in 1976. They say there have been 33 Amamis in the Futa religious organization. My grandfather, Alain San Baro, was the most intellectual of them all, the most valiant. He knew a lot of things. And all of the descendants of San Baro were nobles. They were intellectuals on the religious as well as cultural circles. I represent the village of Aire Lao, but also the Futa because I am from the Almami family, who are the founding members of the Futa people. Concerning marriage, if you tell a young girl, I give you away in marriage, she will have two emotions. She'll feel sad, but she'll also feel happy to be part of the Almami family. If you see her making weird movements, that means she will not accept the proposal. If she accepts the proposal, she will leave the room and go look for water or something else out of respect because she will be too shy to find herself alone in the room with her future parents. Nevertheless, there are certain marriages that are not good. You see boys that come from other villages and often the girl does not introduce the boy to her parents. We don't refuse this type of marriage, but it is always important to know the other family or their background. Having an exchange between the two families is a minimum, but to just show up with a man and say that you want him as your husband is not enough. Islam does not give a girl away for marriage to just anyone. You have to know the person first. The Quran says that everyone must be married. Women should marry when they reach maturity and the marriage has to be consummated according to the laws of Islam, as the Prophet recommended, and every marriage must have a trusted witness. When someone comes to propose marriage to a young girl, he has to follow the rules of Islam. It is from this moment that you can give your blessing. In Islam, the Prophet tells us to respect the writings in the Quran. It is not recommended to marry a girl who is a minor. The bride has to be old enough to understand the responsibilities that come with marriage. If she is taken too young, she does not know what real love is, and she will not know the difference between good and bad. The Quran also tells us that every man has to have a wife, and they must respect each other mutually. Marriage is the most beautiful and important thing in life. I wish that everyone have success in their marriage. I also thank God for this blessing. When a Torado woman prepares for a marriage, she calls the griots. It is these old griots who sing about her family's lineage. When the griot arrives with his horse, we offer him another one for his return journey. It is only when this happens that the marriage festivities begin. If this is not done, no one will begin the marriage ceremony. If he comes with his own horse, we must offer him a new one. It is the women who sing the yala. It is a song for the Torado, or nobles, to know their history and to be respected by others. When a woman is preparing for marriage, she first has to get ready at her mother's house. The younger brothers and sisters of the groom's father come to the house to braid her hair with beads and help her get ready in her traditional gown. One thing that is particular with the pular is their scarring and tattooing. These are rituals women do in order to earn respect. For the scarring, we place a small incision in her forehead and let the blood run. The tattooing dates all the way back to Fatumata Bintu Asul, 
who is the Prophet Muhammad's daughter. People decided to dress like her. Before, women used to use needles, but now the younger generation no longer uses them. Before, there were no designs, but the young women of today have created different forms and figures. It's the new generation. If there is a horse available, we put the bride on it. The man puts a cloth over her head and jumps up next to her. People gather around them in traditional outfits. They play music and sing. When they arrive at the groom's house, the women in his family welcome the bride. They sit her down and form a circle around her. After the consummation of the marriage, if the young girl is proven to be a virgin, the groom's family will give her gold. Her brothers and sisters-in-law will give her money or a horse. It is what we call jeganai. But actually, things have changed. Now men offer a house or a car as their gift of satisfaction. On the other hand, if after the marriage it is determined that the girl is not a virgin, the girl is taken back to her parents, who are obliged to reimburse the cost of the wedding. Even if they refuse the woman, some families will not ask to be paid back. But the problem with young girls these days is money. They are too materialistic. So if her husband is poor, she'll go with other men and risk being unfaithful. In traditional Pular families, we do not recognize rich and poor. Everyone is the same. They always live together. They are united. They eat, drink, and sleep together. But today, a man who makes a lot of money condescends the poor. Nevertheless, despite the poverty, there are young women and girls who maintain their integrity.